Fu Critic. <sighs> Why the K and Critic? The K is for Kaleidoscope, and of course, sometimes Karate. Hello everybody, glad to see you back. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're not covering a film. I love Fu in film, it's a great medium, and of course the practical aspect of learning Fu is always good. But, what if Fu is used in different mediums? What if it was used in a comic book? That's right, I was recently gifted this by Zana Von Davies, thank you so much, so I could read it and give my interpretation of how I felt this came out. Now it's very interesting to me because I never thought about the medium of Kung Fu being used in a comic book, and I'm sure this isn't the first time, but how are they going to handle some of the more interesting aspects and make it pop out from the rest? Well, Zanavan Davies, practicing martial arts for the last 18 years, has made sure that all of the moves represented in the book are actual practical moves. Great effort done there, and the fact that this is based on the legacy of Fang Chi, the developer of White Crane. Now, let's go through the cast and then take a look at this interesting historical, but also a little bit of fiction story. Who do we have? Fang Chi, our heroic heroine. Fang Hung, her father. The evil Lung. Mu, her nanny. Wang, the ball general. Sun Zen Wu, the secret mystical monk, and Pan the Madman. That's our cast. Now, what story do we have? Our story picks up as Fang Chi and her nanny are running through the woods to go to a temple. For what purpose, we don't know yet. After arriving, and just before we find out what's going on, we cut to three months prior with her father. Typical teacher, student, father and daughter relationship. Daughter says, I know better than you, I'm great at Kung Fu, step on back, old man. And of course, he's saying, you don't know enough, you know outer strength, not inner strength. There's a good line here about him looking at her saying, Buddha's balls, you don't know enough. It's a little tongue-in-cheek at times with the dialogue here, but it's fun. After this point, father and daughter go into town to get supplies, and they run into a monk. He says that they've seen a lot of evil doings just outside of the temple. Will you please come help? Her father says, of course, but sends Fang Chi home. Fang Chi, returning home and becoming quite frustrated, decides to go back to the temple. Now, this is where we left off in the beginning. Just as she gets in, her father is decapitated by the evil lung with his black sword of death. Very gruesome. Very graphic. And then after this point, she decides, what are we going to do? We're going to have revenge. Come on, it's a kung fu story. You know we have to have revenge in there. After this point, she goes back home and on a mystical night sees a white crane. Ooh. The white crane quickly bats away her attacks. She decides to follow it into the woods, runs into Pan, who's also out there to practice, and he tells her, if you fast for five days, you will find your new master and find your path. She says, all right. While this is happening, the evil baddie Lung, his cohort, and the general are quickly trying to prepare for embodying yin and yang into an explosion that will connect them with a mystical other world, allowing them to transform into pure evil. This is when we're getting into a little bit more of the science fiction aspect, but it's cool stuff. We hop back to Fang Chi. She has fasted. She follows the crane once again, falls unconscious, and is quickly revived by our master, the secret mystical master, Sun Zin Wu. A little bit creepy there with that head spinner around, ain't he? After this point, he builds her back up to health, starts to teach her how to build your inner core strength so she can have the energy that she needs to understand, comprehend whatever this new white crane style is that she's going to discover. Of course, at the end, there's a cliffhanger. Got to keep you coming back for more where we see that the mystical baddies are building up this huge amount of evil kung fu so that they can become beasts and kill. It's pretty darn cool. I have to admit, when I got this, I didn't know what to expect. I thought it would just be a stereotypical, by-the-numbers kung fu story that wasn't going to be that entertaining. But I ended up really liking it. Most of the panels are really good for the artwork, very engaging, interesting. A couple are a little bit off here and there, and some parts for the dialogue are a little bit ho-hum, but overall, 
it was fun. I liked it. I really want to read part two. I hope it comes out soon. You can find this book on Amazon. Just type in White Crane comic book or White Crane graphic novel. It'll bring it right up. We're also going to add a few links, so if you want to go directly to their site, or if you want to pick up a few extra cool things like their t-shirt or whatever, they've got a lot of cool stuff. So I'm really hoping you're going to check it out. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you for the book. And who knows, maybe if this takes off and you guys enjoy us covering different mediums of kung fu, we'll do something like this again. Thanks again. Take care. Everybody's favorite spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Everybody wants to see a brawl. Somebody's got to stand, somebody's got to fall. One, two, three, in the bell and the call. It's Hong Kung Fu, it's a fight, not a draw. What they come to see is people bounce off the wall and hear the people all. Ah.